So even though you didn't get the lock, didn't get the win, rather you like your offensive output tonight. Uh, yeah, the, it spots. There, it was good. They walked nine guys. We walked twelve. So it wasn't necessarily the the defensive game of the year. I wouldn't wouldn't say. And uh, tip your cap to the Zags that they scored seven runs with two outs and six of the our our twelve walks scored. So uh, that's not the way our pitching staff and this program's built. We've got to find some guys that can throw the ball over the plate to give our guys a chance to win. I was uh, really impressed with the, the will to win and my the tenacity and the big big number five and our guys getting up off the deck after a very frustrating early part of the game. Uh, I really commend my men to, that they did, did everything they could, running on fumes. Probably we get home at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's not an excuse, but I was really proud of their effort and uh, I was hoping that we'd find a way to uh, get the defense shored up and throw more strikes and give them a chance to win late, and we didn't do it. We, had, you know, we had some at bats get away from us with the bases loaded and strikeout lookings and stuff like that. But uh, overall, I think uh, offensively, when you score seven runs in this ballpark, you should win the game. What did you see out of Matt? Matt Crew. Uh, I just told him we're, you know, he's he's about as frustrated of his individual as uh, you can imagine. Uh, you know, everybody in the dugout's feeling for him, trying to get him through it. Including Coach Horton, and we keep running them out there. And it, quite frankly, it's been expensive, and, and he cares a lot about our team. So I told him to hang in there, that uh, we'll get him through this. And, you know, I still haven't changed my mind about Matt Kirk. He's a wonderful human being. He's going to pitch in the big leagues. He's just, he's going through, a, it's not, not a yips, or you've seen people have the yips or whatever. He's going through a very tough, uh, tough time in his athletic career. So uh, that doesn't define Matt Crook, and, and we're going to stay with him. and. Hopefully we can get him through that this this year, and he gets to pitch some critical innings for us. Susanara said he was trying to make some adjustments and not throw the ball as hard as he could every time. Have you seen him make any other adjustments in the bullpen? Yeah, I think he's more under control, and you know, it's you, you try to you know use the breath, or you try not to curse, or uh, you know, I'm sure you guys heard some of that, and I get exaggerated emotions, and, and then you build that up, and it, it almost. Uh, you know, I think we've all been there where it's extreme anger and you try to keep your poise and get your breath and all that. And, and then when it finally comes out, it comes out. You know, and I've been there. And I think the what you're seeing him do is express uh, he's, he's going through a very tough time. You know, and he's, he's a very gifted guy and he's had a history of success. And uh, like I said, uh, we're all with him uh, and feel very bad for him, including Coach Horton. The scouts were out here tonight. Has, has Crook said anything to you about what he plans to do next year? No. We'll, we'll have to see what uh, what they think about his struggles. Uh, you know, that's part of maybe what he feels like might be slipping away or slipping down. And, uh, no, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And, and if the fact that uh, the draft doesn't go his way and he elects to come back, then that's good for the Ducks for next year. It's a potential milestone win for you tonight. Do you think that was hanging over your team's head? No, uh, no. I, I didn't even think about that. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe you hope your 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 guys want to do that for the old guy, but um, I you know, I don't want to jinx us, but I would imagine we're going to win a game. You know, uh, it, m it might not be as uh, <laughs> celebratory if it's over at Goss Stadium, but uh, it, it's never been about me. They, those guys know it's not about me, and and if, and if they are tr if they were showing the will to win because of that, good for them. But it's, I hadn't, I didn't even think about that one bit. This going into this game or whatever, it's just another game for me, and it's more about the 2016 Ducks and whatever it is, 999 previous wins. Tim said I'm pretty determined about com coming back out tomorrow, winning. What's going to be your message to, to the guys? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think I don't, I won't have to say a word. They'll be, they'll be ready to go tomorrow, and uh, we're going to start Stringer and. And who you know, it's all hands on on deck. That we don't want to use anybody up. And uh, you know, like I said, I was really proud of our guys. They had every right to play a little bit tired, non-energetic today, tonight. And uh, I, 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 I shouldn't say there's no question because anything can happen. But I think they'll be ready to go tomorrow. How much are you thinking ahead to the Oregon State series? Uh, we'll, handle, we'll we'll start getting ready for that on on Wednesday. We need to take care of tomorrow. We, we, the reason we schedule these two games isn't just to play two games. We, we need to win 
and we let one get away, unfortunately, tonight. So uh, our total focus in that locker room and tomorrow will be about tomorrow's game. We're, we know where the Beavers are, and we've had two games with them, and we flew back on the same plane with them. So it isn't, it's not about the Beavers right now. It's about uh, Gonzaga.